Hello everyone and welcome back again to BPS. Now as you all know that uh, Sheikh Hasina, she has fled to India. She's here right now in India and the condition in Bangladesh as you all are very much quite aware of what is happening in Bangladesh. Now this is called as one of the biggest change in the entire South Asian region and uh, Sheikh Hasina's ostro from Bangladesh is actually a very bad news for India. Now, you must have actually read a lot of articles on the, why it is such a bad thing for India and why India is so much worried that Sheikh Hasina's ostro from Bangladesh has brought really bad news for India. Now, you must have uh, read stories or you must have read reports from other news and analysis, but uh, from the academic point of view, there are certain things which it is important for you to understand so that you can write it in your answer, you can practice it and also you can uh, incorporate those points in your answers. So from the academic perspective, let's understand why Bangladesh uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's ostra from power is, is really a bad news for India. Now, first of all, from the regional context, if we if we are to understand this one from the re regional context, then we are going to find a lot many new information. First of all, as you all know that India is not having a very good relation right now. India does not have a very good relation with its immediate neighbors. Like here, I have mentioned about K.P. Sharma Oli. Now, K.P. Sharma Oli have come into power again after, de after defeating Prachanda and K.P. Sharma Oli is very, very pro China. Okay, his entire government is very pro China. That Mohammed Muizu is from Maldives, and uh, recently we have heard about the brawl that happened between the, the government of Maldives and the government of India. Now we have lost two immediate neighbors, but Bangladesh was supposed to be one of the most friendly neighbors of India because government of Bangladesh which was run by Sheikh Hasina used to be a very good friend for India. And in the region where New Delhi faces hostile neighbors like Pakistan and shares uncertain ties with countries like Sri Lanka, Nepal, Hasina remained a staunch friend extending support to New Delhi. So Bangladesh and India have a long history, have had, have had a long uh, history of uncertain of have a long history of uncertain ties between the two countries uh, till the year 1990s but after 1990s and since the year 2000 since Hasina came to power in the last 17 years India has seen a lot of improvements in the relation with Bangladesh and we have had a very much friendly relation in terms of everything from e from infrastructure from economy from political diplomacy we have had a very good relation now with release of jail opposition leader, former Prime Minister Khalida Jia, hours after Sheikh Hasina resigned as country's Prime Minister and fled Bangladesh. The decision to set the former prime uh, to set the former PM free was taken after meeting between the military and political parties of Bangladesh. Now Khalida Jia, as you are quite aware of Khalida Jia's political uh, fallout, if you are not aware of this, let me tell you that she was actually holding power before Sheikh Hasina and she leads the Bangladesh Nationalist Party. But that party and her, she and her son was actually accused of a lot of corruption and gamble after which she was jailed she was imprisoned for the last uh, how many years we can say 17 years she was in in prison and she was uh, in prison again in the year 2018 so Khalida Jia, her party, her party has a very radical stance towards India. She has never supported India and her political, de her political decisions have always been to favor anti-India elements. Like for example, this is a bad thing for Northeast India as of now because Northeast India had seen the rise of many militant nationalist outfit like Alpha, you can say, NSCN, you can say, and other such kind of uh, lot of insurgent movements. Now those insurgency movements have had uh found a very good ground or you can say a good political support when Khalida Jia was in power in ba in Bangladesh. So she and her son Tariq Rehman Zia, they actually ran out of power after their government was accused of a huge scale of corruptions back in the year 2000s. Okay, And it was during Khalida Jia's rule only from 91 to 96 and from 2002 and 6 that insurgencies in Northeast India surged. So she openly, openly she came out and she openly openly said that uh, the northeastern 
insurgent movements are actually a nationalist movement and we must uh, support these movements and her government supported in terms of providing arms and ammunitions in terms of providing political support and also in terms of providing all the uh, extra uh, logistical uh, in terms of uh, in terms of providing the logistical support to the insurgent movements in the entire northeast india so the period from 1991 to 96 and from period from 2002 to 2006 we have seen that northeast india's insurgency rose to its uh, up to, uh, to its optimum level because of the political support from the khalida jias government now if khalida jia again has to come back into power in bangladesh so we might see a resurgence of insurgencies again in the northeast india we might see some proactive actions from the alpha and other insurgent movements so this is not a very good news for northeast india because if the region is not stable the region is not going to host uh, you know business houses the region is not going to bring in new developmental projects because if we want if we if we want development in a particular region the region has to be politically stable but if Bangladesh current situation does not uh, give uh, does not offer proper political stability then it is a very bad news for the northeast India as well now Jia's home minister is in jail for arranging arms and ammunitions from Pakistan for Alpha arguably the strongest insurgent group of the northeast back in the day so she was the one who openly came and supported the Alpha which is U United Liberation Front of Assam now it, it it is an open secret that during her rule Bangladesh worked in close coordination with Pakistan to subvert Indian interests and create a terror conducive environment for jihadi so there was a huge inflow of jihadis from Bangladesh which was also funded by a lot of Islamic organizations residing in Pakistan so they used to uh, you know money launder a lot and then send a lot of uh, lot of jihadis into the Indian territory so this used to be a long prolonged sort of some sort of political propaganda which uh, which uh, Khalida Jia and her government used to do for a long period of time but until and unless until then when India intervened and then India said that uh, you know India should uh, so at that point of time when Sheikh Hasina came into power she came with a very pro India at uh, she came with a very pro India attitude and then she stopped all the military fundings and the ammunitions and also lo the logistic support to all of the insurgent movements which were residing in Bangladesh and working for anti India things. Now, on 1997, Khalida Jia openly announced that Bangladesh Nationalist Party will support the insurgent groups in Northeast India, claiming that they were fighting a war of independence. And I don't know what this war of independence she meant, but, de but uh, definitely her political propaganda was to support for anti-India elements in this point of time. Now, Jia added that the use of Bangladesh army will not be allowed against Northeastern insurgent groups. Interestingly, when Sheikh Hasina took over, she became a key partner in India's fight against insurgents. So if anybody of you know what the situation in Northeast has been, so right in the year 2000s, early 2000s, the entire region was circumvented with a lot of insurgent movements and groups and a lot of turmoil. So that happened because the Bangladesh government did not support the Indian government in cracking down these insurgent groups. And she openly said that Bangladesh Nationalist Party will not support the use of Bangladesh armies to circumvent the insurgent groups which are working in Bangladesh for their liberation in the Northeast India. But after Sheikh Hasina came to power, she adopted a very pro-India approach and then she used a Bangladesh army to crack down on all the militants which have taken residence in Bangladesh. Now, in many ways, Khalida Jia's rule felis, uh, facilitated the mushrooming of an anti-India narrative in Bangladesh so much that the ordi ordinary Bangladeshis began growing hostile to New Delhi over what they thought was interference in the internal politics. This uh, Krevix has only grown larger in the years gone by and today the BNP and Jamaat inherit a Bangladesh where India is viewed as an overpowering entity. So they have never liked India because they think that India has always been circumventing into their internal politics which is like uh, they have made allegations against the government of India that government of India has intervened in their internal politics. Internal politics by internal politics I mean in the conduct of elections in the uh, 
in the choosing of candidate and then you know particularly targeting certain groups inside bangladesh which are actually uh, anti in uh, which are actually anti india so these are the kind of allegations which the a Bangladesh Nationalist Party and the Khalida Jia has made allegations against New Delhi. And from then on, the party which, uh, which was ruled by Khalida Jia never ever supported India in any form of any kind of political cooperation. So there has always been a strong opposition against India in Bangladesh. Next, we have the economic and military context. Now, what might happen after Sheikh Hasina left Bangladesh. A month ago, Bangladesh inked a deal with Indian defense ship yeah, GRSE in Kolkata to build a 800-ton advanced ocean-going tug. There were also talks for Bangladesh to buy Indian offshore petrol vessels. Now, these are certain shipyards which are, will be in the Indian Ocean, which will be running in the Bay of Bengal. And why these are just military? These are naval carrier. These are naval carrier ships where it is very important for us to keep our oceans safe from pirates and other attacking and and, uh, and other atta attacking enemies. So this defense shipyard, which was a deal which was signed just a month ago between Bangladesh and India. And besides this, the two countries have had close military ties. But I am not sure if the present government that will come into Bangladesh will have the similar kind of attitude towards India. Now, incoming interim government may not wish to choose the same path as Hasina did on matters on defense cooperation, but however, some believe that defense will not change much because the army chief, his name is General Walker Ul Zaman. So, General Walker Ul Zaman is basically pro India. So, many of us are speculating, many Indian scholars are speculating that even though the government is very anti India, the military is not, the officer is not, the army chief is not. So, probably on the defense sector, India and Bangladesh will maintain the similar ties as they did in the in the Hasina government. Now, India and Bangladesh been neighbors have a strong trade relationship. In trade terms, Bangladesh is India's biggest partner in the subcontinent and India is Bangladesh's second biggest partner in Asia after China. So, both India and China have been competing for the Bangladeshi market uh, for a quite long period of time. So, when India recently, when Bangladesh and India have come more and more closer, especially after the Ukraine war and especially after the recent Bangladesh election where Sheikh Hasina became victorious. But many of the scholars in Bangladesh and many uh, people say that, that's, uh, that that election itself in Bangladesh was a rigged election because Sheikh Hasina somewhere she took powers from the international power. She took uh, help from the other international agencies to uh, get hold of the political power inside Bangladesh. So many people inside Bangladesh think that Sheikh Hasina's term right now that uh, she held a power was more, was basically the result of a rigged election. So that was somewhere a point where many people they did not like Sheikh Hasina for this and many anti Sheikh Hasina El, el, uh, elements which were there inside the Bangladesh, they found a reason to vent out there. And the student protest was just a small protest which came out from the Dhaka University. But other el elements which were anti-India and plus anti-Sheikh Hasina, they came out. Uh, they came out together and they gave an ultimate violent shape to this entire student protest, which was currently only. It, it was only a protest to take away the quota system, to protest against a quota system which was initiated by Sheikh Hasina's government. But entirely now the scholars are saying that because there were many anti-India elements which were working inside Bangladesh, so they found actually a reason to escalate the entire protest and turn it into a violent movement where they found an opportunity to take away the political powers of Sheikh Hasina and start a coup all around it. But General Walker Ul Zaman, he used to work very closely with uh, Sheikh Hasina. He used to be a very good friend of Sheikh Hasina as well. So he is the reason why Sheikh Hasina found uh, time to flee the country and come back into you know, flee and you know, uh, move back to India. And then now she is on her way to go and seek asylum in one of the European countries. But General Walker Ul Zaman, he is of the opinion because uh, many of the people in Bangladesh, 
who are supported by the anti-India forces and who have anti-India sentiments inside them have actually provoked the entire situation to such an extent that they actually wanted to oster Sheikh Hasina from the power. Because I told you the context that many people in Bangladesh and also many people all over here thinks that the uh, the Sheikh Hasina's election was basically a rigged election. But whatever it is, it was a very good thing for us because we used to maintain good relation with Bangladesh and we used to have a very cordial and peaceful in terms of the development of Northeast India also. But now since Sheikh Hasina has been ousted from power and if Khalida Jia, she wins this, uh, now she is going to form the interim government and forming an interim government will not have that much of power. But if the election again is being uh, conducted inside Bangladesh and if Bangladesh Nationalist Party wins this election it will be a really a bad uh, we can say a bad news for entire India. Now for instance insurgent groups operating in Northeast India often take century in Bangladesh owing to the porous border that the two nations share. So we used to have a long back history where many Bangladeshi immigrants used to uh, you know come and go out of in from Bangladesh to India illegally they didn't have any papers they just used to cross the border because it was a porous border by porous border we mean it was an open border it was not a fence border and not a very well guarded border so this used to be a very very major uh, this used to be a major issue in in relationship with India and Bangladesh and uh, uh, we have seen Assam underwent a lot of, uh, you know, a long history of the struggle of protests against the Bengali immigrants, against the Bangladeshi immigrants who have come all the way from Bangladesh and entered into Indian soil without having any papers and they are the illegal immigrants. So we have seen the growth of the Assam movement and now we have again seen the rise of the anti-car protests and all those things. So these are the these are the extra elements which have happened ever since that uh, pro uh, that anti india government have taken a stance in bangladesh so we can have we can expect another unrest in the northeastern re northeastern region in the coming years if the government in bangladesh the next government in bangladesh does not take any step to make a balance between a good relation with India and Bangladesh. But if they are anti-India, then definitely we might again see a huge wave of political unrest in the Northeast India. Again, we have the problem of the religious extremism call as a Jamaat-e-Islami in Bangladesh. So this is an organization, it's an outfit which is very, very anti-India and it is also anti-Sheikh Hasina. And this is a very radical group in Bangladesh. It's a Muslim radical outfit and they believe uh, they are mostly very radical in terms of their operation and also in terms of their philosophies and and belief and during sheikh hasina's term this islami this jamaat -e islami uh, the the government of bangladesh made a very huge crackdown on the operational activities of the jamaat -e islami but uh, Many believe that this organization is actually one of the subsidiary organizations uh, whose main operating system is actually in Pakistan and they have been funded from the Pakistani anti-India elements to work in Bangladesh and against India forces. Okay, and these uh, jamaat e islami these other forces, these are the radical forces who might be given a lot of... Lot of uh, of uh, logistic support and lot of political support not only from Bang uh, from Pakistan but also from China. So this is just a speculation but many of the Indian scholars they say that this might be a case. So without Hasina there is a strong possibility of the Jamaat Islami growing more and more in, pro in uh, prominence which could open the doors for Pakistan's return into Bangladeshi polity. So this Jamaat Islami this group is mostly they found they uh, they are the they believe in the same philosophical foundation as most of the radical islamic group in pakistan they believe at so they have this unified idea of the u of uh, uniting the muslim community all together and uh, they have always been operating not only for anti-india against anti-india uh, sorry against india but also against the progressive society of Bangladesh. So under Sheikh Hasina, we had seen that Bangladesh has actually made a huge progress in terms of the democratic 
uh, in terms of the democratic uh, parameters uh, like they used to uh, they used to give more importance to the fundamental rights to the democratic principles and less importance to the religious outfits and the religious philosophies but this jamaat e islami this more or less believes in the religious philosophy more than the democratic values so this will be a very bad news for bangladesh also for india also okay now infrastructure in terms of infrastructure we have seen that india and bangladesh they have had made a deal regarding the setup of a railway link from agartala to akhaura so akhaura is a place in bangladesh and from akhaura's dhaka to agartala which is in in uh, tripura so we had made a deal to establish a railway link between bangladesh and rest of the northeast india why because when i made the video on the siliguri corridor i told you that siliguri corridor is not very well protected because it is just a narrow corridor and above the siliguri corridor just 50 kilometers from the siliguri corridor let's see this is the this is the siliguri corridor here almost 50 kilometers away this is the chumbi valley which is located in the bhutan area which is in the tibetan bhutan and here all the chinese forces have already made their bases here the chinese forces have already made bases in the chumbi valley which is a uh, you know uh, the doklam pass and from the chumbi valley is to from that uh, doklam pass it is only 50 kilometers away so if china is if chinese army have successfully made the villages and lot of military uh, if they have equipped themselves with lot of military infrastructure in that so it is not uh, quite impossible for them to come and infiltrate the siliguri corridor and if the siliguri corridor comes under the control of the chinese army then it will become really difficult for india to send forces to the northeast india and northeast india will then become completely cut off from the rest of india and why india needs northeast india india needs northeast india because we need to establish our philosophy of loki's policy without northeast india we cannot est- we cannot even imagine to establish trade relations with the rest of south east asian economies like singapore malaysia thailand philippines vietnam etc etc so these south east asian economies are very essential for india because they are our neighbors also and plus they are the asian tigers so we need to learn from them we need to establish more and more trade links with them but if the siliguri corridor is taken into control by the chinese then in that case we are left with no uh no way to uh, to establish a connection with the northeast india so this became an alternative the alt- alt- alternative was establishing agartala and dhaka to establish a rail link connecting agartala and dhaka but the problem is this was the this was actually a project which was signed uh, during sheikh hasina's government it is in the last year in the year 2023 so this rail link and then also the khulna mongla port rail, uh, rail link these two were the infrastructure projects that would have uh, that would have uh, provided a new strategic outlook for india's defense purpose but actually because now sheikh hasina's government has been ousted now we don't know the new government that will come into bangladesh whether they are going to continue with this project or not so this becomes one of the main reasons for speculations that india has con- uh, right now is undergoing that if the current government which comes into bangladesh if it is actually very very anti india it might not even allow the project of akura agartala you know cross border rail link and khulna mongla port rail link to even become materialized because if it is not getting met if it will not get materialized then we will not have any avenues or any other opportunities to establish a second connecting link between india and the northeast india so we are left with no way so now this is the the biggest fear the biggest speculation that india is currently undergoing that if the new government is anti india it is definitely not going to continue these sort of infrastructure projects because this could have provided us a very good uh, source of alternative in terms of rerouting our indian armies from the rest of india to the northeast india so we cannot uh, we cannot uh, be very sure of the protection of the of the siliguri corridor in case 
from Bhutan, from the Doklam Pass, from the Chumbi Valley, if Chinese army would have would come and you know occupy the Siliguri Corridor, then we must have another alter alternative for our armies to have a pass from rest of India to the northeast India. So it only takes around thirty. Uh, it, it it would have reduced the time of travel from Kolkata to Agartala and to Dhaka in about from thirty one hours to ten hours. Only ten hours of travel. Okay. So this is the main setback that we have experienced right now. And now when finally we come the China's card. Now how China is going to be helpful in all of these. Now China is like, agar you know, बैती गंगा में जब लोग अपना हाथ धोते हैं तो इट्स तो इट्स लाइक हर कोई अपना फ़ायदा ले रहा है तो हम क्यों ना ले तो चाइना इज़ ऑल्सो समथिंग लाइक दैट मतलब अभी वो आके अपनी बहती गंगा में वो अपना हाथ भी धो रहा है सो इंडिया एंड बांग्लादेश बी नेबर्स हैव अ स्ट्रॉन्ग ट्रेड रिलेशनशिप एंड इंडिया बांग्लादेश इज़ इंडियाज बिगेस्ट पार्टनर इन द सब कॉन्टिनेंट एंड इंडिया इज़ बांग्लादेश सेकेंड बिगेस्ट पार्टनर इन एशिया आफ्टर चाइना सो बो चाइना एंड इंडिया हैव हैड अ ह्यूज मार्केट इन बांग्लादेश नाउ दिस इज़ अ टीस्टा रिवर डील विच इंडिया एंड बांग्लादेश हैव रिसेंटली एग्रीड ऑन सर्टेन टर्म्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ द टीस्टा रिवर नाउ टीस्टा रिवर इज़ अ रिवर एवरीबडी ऑफ यू नो विच कम्स एंड देन जॉइंस इन टू द बे ऑफ बेंगाल एंड देन जॉइंस इन टू द ब्रह्मपुत्र रिवर Now this Tista River project is a river where we could have harnessed a lot of hydroelectric power potential if we could have built dams, dams and and reservoirs and stuff and stuff like that. Now both India and China are aware on the lookout of convincing Bangladesh that let us go and make this dam, let us go and make this reservoir. So India was also on the lookout of. having getting permission from bangladesh to establish this dam and china was also on the lookout but recently just a few months back i would say just a month back when uh, sheikh hasina when prime minister modi met sheikh hasina both of them agreed on certain terms in certain terms on the, how to progress on the tista river project because first of all we have a water sharing problem in terms of the tista river and secondly in terms of building reservoirs and dams it would be very beneficial for both countries. countries plus it was a deal which was signed a long time back but it never got 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 materialized be, uh, uh, because the west bengal government it pro, it protested against the tista river dam building now china is also on the on the lookout china also wants to have this agreement signed with bangladesh now this is like a bolstering ties in the range of critical areas such as digital domain maritime sphere blue economy railway space green technology health and medicine so when recently sheikh hasina came to india and and visited prime minister modi then apart from the tista river deal we had a lot of other deals like on the maritime sector on the health on the infrastructure on the blue economy on the digital economy and stuff like that so since we were having a very good time in terms of having a lot of deal and agreement signed with bangladesh right immediately after that after a month or so this protest emerged this protest started and it escalated into a very violent one it it turned out first it started as a protest and then it turned out as a coup it turned out as a as a civil war and then it turned out as a coup okay so this turn out of e of events from the protest to a start of a coup in uh, and ousting the government of bangladesh so this cannot be a coincidence and this cannot be a an accident it is mostly a stage protest it was mostly a stage way but we don't know who did it uh, uh, we don't know whether chinese elements were involved in it or whether pakistani elements were involved in it so our government is still uh, is still carrying out all the research and all the information that it that it requires to understand the entire situation but we definitely know that this since the start of the protest it just turned out into an ugly turn it took the shape of a very bad shape of a war or something and it was more or less a stage protest or everything so these things cannot be a coincidence so right after india made a very good deal in terms of the tista river agreement and stuff like that and since all all of a sudden now bangladesh government is at its toes and then it, it has fled so next we have is a the bimstech project the bimstech project which is bay of bengal initiative for 
multi-sectoral technical and economic cooperation. It's a project which involved Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, Myanmar, and uh, Sri Lanka and Thailand. Now the problem is now already for this BIMSTEC program, already we had lost two neighbors. One is the Myanmar. Myanmar we had already lost to a political instability of a military coup there. So Myanmar is under a military coup and since it is not a democratic government, it is not, re it is not reliable. So we cannot establish any sort of good political connections with Myanmar. And secondly, Nepal is also now gone. Why? Because Nepal's capability P. Sharma Oli's government is anti-India and it is pro-China. So Nepal also is gone from our hand. So what remained is Bangladesh, Bhutan, India. Now Bhutan is also not very secure in terms of having a future relation with India because Bhutan is very near to China. China's uh, aggressive policy. So Bhutan uh, today or tomorrow might even bend their uh, their, po their political interest towards uh, China. So we are not quite sure. So we were left with a stable neighbor which was Bangladesh and uh, then we were left with Thailand. But Sri Lanka also since uh, Sri Lanka's economy went from this to this. So since it dipped to that low, so Sri Lanka will take a lot of time to even emerge from that kind of crisis and that kind of depth. So Sri Lanka is somewhere 30, 40 years back down the line now. So it will require another 30 years to bring to get to the same economic stable positions. Now considering now it is under the debt trap of China. So in order to recover all those things back, it will it is going to take another 30 years for Sri Lanka. So we were left only with two neighbors Thailand Bangladesh and Bhutan and Bhutan as I said is not quite reliable as for future we don't know what is going to happen now Bangladesh also is gone okay Bangladesh also is gone now Thailand we cannot maintain a good relation with Thailand unless we get a hold of Myanmar so abhi Myanmar bhi hamare haath se chala gaya, but it is not our fault because Myanmar is basically under military coup so until and unless to establish relation with Thailand and the other of the rest of the Southeast Asian economies we needed to have access to Myanmar lekin Myanmar jo hai wo military coup ke under hai and there is no any, de any democratic power which exercises in Myanmar and plus there is a lot of ethnic cleansing which is going on right now in Myanmar against the Rohingya people. So this is a very unstable political situation. So India cannot go and establish a good political uh, a relation with Myanmar as of now. So our relation with Thailand has been cut off through land route. And now establishing a land route through Thailand was possible because if we would have had another route, but Myanmar is blocked. And now having establishment of uh, this Lucas policy, the Lucas policy has always been a has always come under a lot of problems right from the start. So India always in terms whenever India starts to uh, starts to work to establish the Lucas policy to make success the Lucas policy to materialize the Lu the Lucas policy some way or the other the government in or in either of the countries they fall down so definitely we are not a stupid people to just believe that it is simply a protest but it was a stage at one point it became quite a stage one from the start it was not a stage one it was just a normal protest against a quota system but other than that later it became a stage one it was maybe funded by a lot of anti-india uh, it was later must have funded by a lot of anti-india elements and then it rose to something in the form of a civil crisis and then it came to this is a uh, form of a coup but uh, many people say that since hasina's government was mostly a uh, rigged uh, a mostly a rigged government and then many people in Bangladesh say that her government was not able to control the inflation inflationary market considering the Ukraine war and uh, all of oil prices and other stuffs have increased a lot so the inflationary prices in Bangladesh were so high that middle class people they got fed up with this government so somewhere one angle we can say that the uh, mismanagement of the entire market in ba in uh, Bangladesh by the Hasina government, mismanagement of the market cap. And then we can also say that rise of the anti-India elements was another reason. And then third is that, that Hasina's government was considered to be a rigged government mostly. So those things, they came together, they clapped together and it... Uh, 
and it found an expression in the in the student protest in the quota system as well so these kind of things when a government does it expresses it more or less it uh, gives rise to the expression of a protest by a lot of people who are not happy with the government so this became a very big tragedy in the southeast asia but more than tragedy in bangladesh now it 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 will go it is going to become a political headache for india now we must now we must uh, be now we will just have to see what indian government stand is next and which government comes to power we also have to see how india uh, you know uh, how india maintains its its relation with bangladesh in the next when the next government comes so all these things we have to keep in close focus so i hope from the academic angle it is quite sure that what are the things that you need to write in case such kind of questions crop up in your question paper okay so till then take care if you have any queries if you ha- want to write something please write down in the comment section and we'll try to reach back to you okay till then take care and all the best